again. Uh, back in the air Canada after a uh, long vacation. Flying to New York with uh, Søren, who is uh, the cameraman right now. I think we should talk about the autopilot because it's interesting. How do we use the autopilot? If we don't use the autopilot, we fly with the side stick. I guess you know that already. And if we use the autopilot, we use this this uh, panel for the selections. And you select the autopilot here, autopilot one or autopilot two. All the takeoffs are performed manually, and uh, at a suitable. Uh, time after the takeoff you engage the autopilot you do it especially when it's it's busy or when uh, the co-pilot is occupied with uh, talking on the radio and when when you find it's appropriate to use it if it's not so busy today it was not so busy in Copenhagen then I flew manually for a long time because I wanted to feel the plane and uh, it's, it's good also for training purpose because one day you don't can you can't use the autopilot and then you have to be perfectly comfortable with the manual flying manual flying is is the base of its own it's really important Ninety-nine percent of the landings are The only exception is when it's dense fog. Then it's a requirement to use the autopilot for an automatic landing. Then we press this button, approach, and select both autopilots on for a fail-safe. Uh, routine. At a suitable distance from the runway, for example, when you see the runway or, or just when you think it's appropriate, when you like, then you disconnect the autopilot and do the landing manually. It's usually softer, better, and you can also land in more crosswind and more gusty winds and so So it's also much more fun, of course. The weather requirement is pretty low. You only need uh, around 75 meters visibility for a Category 3B landing. And when we do a Category 3B landing, we have no decision height, which means that we touch the runway without seeing anything. The 75 meters visibility requirement, that's to be able to leave the runway after the landing. And both pilots are looking in and nobody's looking out. That's the category 3B landing. Instead, what is really important is to look at the flight mode annunciator to see here the annunciation, what the plane is doing. It must do the flare by itself and the rollout because you have rollout guidance uh, keeping the, the track, center line on the track. Category 2 and 1 landing is different. Higher visibility requirement 300 meters and you have a decision height so you must see some light before you commence uh, uh, the landing category one is 210 with the required visibility of 400 so there you have to look out to see you some see any lights you have to go around the mic and you approach and go to an, or fly to another airport also. to able to uh, sit on a perfect position so that you both see the FMA uh, annunciations and the lights outside we have the eye position indicator it's tr uh, two balls here uh, one orange and one white and you have to have them in in line and then you are perfectly positioned to see it's really important to sit 
forward a lot because you have to look down just over the nose to see a couple of uh, lights. Why don't we always use the autopilot for landings? Well, there are some limitations on the autopilot. For example, crosswind. You can check the limitations here. Uh, we have maximum crosswind. USA is 50 knots maximum crosswind, maximum tailwind 10, and in the rest of the world is maximum 20 knots crosswind. So we also and we also need that uh, land manually for the train, and it's usually a lot softer too, uh, at least if you know what you're doing. And it's great fun too, I admit. If you want me to explain something, just write it in the comments and I'll try to make a video of it. Enjoy! Iceland Okay, Daddy. 7 to 7, heavy level 400. 